It's rock show season, and a number of societies have had successful shows so far this year. The Lakeside Gem and Mineral Club show is in a couple of weeks, the 21st and 22nd of May. And I signed up to do a display case, which I've never done before. I've never been to a rock show before, so I don't really have a good idea of how to prepare it, apart from the general dimensions and from going to museums and things like that with their own display cases, but that's kind of a different audience slash agenda. I've been at kind of a loss for what to do for the show because here my rock collection is kind of scattered. There's no real theme to the rocks and minerals that I have in our little display case upstairs, and the majority of my rock collection is still in New York State. Still got to get to that one day. One thing I have been working on is faceting, and so I thought I might do some kind of faceting related display case. And I think I'll, what this video is going to be about is kind of walking through that thought process of building that display case and, you know, showing the final results and all that stuff. One of the things that hadn't really sunk in when I signed up for a display case is just how big they are. Your standard display case for a, just a showcase like this is just under four feet long, so that's how much tape we have out here, and it's two feet deep, which is the depth of my workbench, and two feet tall, which is huge when all you have to display are random little tiny boxes of faceted stones that would just kind of disappear into the background of this huge display case. So I got to think of something to make them stand out a bit more. I don't really want to just display them in these boxes, both because the glass, you know, can be hard to see the stones at different specific angles. Having the backing on there reduces the br brilliance of some of these. So here's an example of one that's in the box. It's got a lot of color and sparkle in it already, but when I take it out, I feel like that just shows a lot more. What I would like to do, I think, my plan right now is to sort these by stone type. So I have things like a couple of garnets here. Let's see, that's a, a nice red garnet that actually had some red instead of just being uh, charcoal, charcoal red, I think is what somebody described these almondine garnets as. There's a number of amethysts. There's another garnet, some neodymium yag. Put that back on there for now. Uh, sunstone, a couple other things in there, laser ruby, that fluorescent one that I showed on, this, on the channel. So I'm going to categorize them by type, and then for the ones where there's different styles of cut, like I would probably just show one garnet because these are all very similar cuts. What I want to do is display them with some rough stone that I have as well. So this is a tumbled but, you know, raw garnet more or less. And this is an agate that I made this little triste garnet agate out of. And then I have some other rough stones that I haven't cut yet or were too small to cut. I think my sunstone, the sunstone that I have left has a couple of major fractures running through it that I can't really work with. So I need to get a little more rough of that. But I can display that next to the stone, show the rough and the polished version next to each other. The thing would be to figure out a way to display all these together in a interesting way. So I need to get some height, I need to get some depth, and get to planning, I guess. After a surprisingly long amount of time and thought, despite how it looks, this is kind of what I've come up with. I'm going to have three rows of gems, where the first one's just going to be a couple gems, and then four and four. After all this time, since January I've, is when I've been faceting, I've only faceted 10 different styles of gems. But what we have is a couple of plastic jars, pill bottles, and trail mix uh, jars. I don't know if I'm going to flip those over and have the more square side be on top, but I got to find a way to make them a little more uniform, hide obviously the labels and all that stuff that are mostly ripped off. Don't need to advertise the peanut butter chocolate mix from Costco, which is dangerously good. But we're gonna do 
you know, one faceted stone and one gem on these first two rows. And then the back row is where there's a couple different styles of cuts that I've done for Mexican topaz, for example. There's a cushion rectangle, whatever you call this, a square cushion, square round, I forgot what that one was called, versus a hexagonal cut for the amethyst there and a couple other ones there. Now my original thought to display them on their pedestals was to use some wire that I had lying around. I'm not sure how exactly that's all gonna come together, but I'll bring you along in the process and we'll try to figure it out here right now. My thought for the caps is to drill holes into them, a couple of holes for however many mounts I need, and then use a nail to put it in there like that, and then that would give me a secure location to attach on the underside the nail head to the bottom with super glue probably. And then I would have a mount that would stand up and they'd be evenly sized. And I would just need to fashion some kind of hook attachment to mount the stones on, not in the case like this, but for example, with the agate here, it would have a little wire basket to be hanging off like that. And then the rough piece would be next to it, like this, so they'd be side by side. And it'd be kind of a before and after, the rough and then the finished version. I suppose the trickiest part is going to be, well, the difficult parts of this are going to be drilling holes in these without breaking them. It would probably be easier in some of the mounts than others, but I'll probably try with this one just to see since this is kind of thick plastic. And another tricky part will be in figuring out how to mount something to a nail that's very smooth. What if I just snip off some wire, a little loop in the middle, glue it down on there once I'm done. I'll make this one for this agate, but then see the wire is too dominant, I think. It's going to overwhelm, especially the smaller stones. Upon third thought, I was overcomplicating things. I don't think I need the nail at all. The stones that I'm supporting are tiny compared to the weight and the strength of this extra wire that I had lying around. So I think all I need to do is feed this through the cap. So I'll feed it through the cap, make a hole instead of coming in the side there, but just for demonstration purposes, feed it through the side and then just make a little loop in the top and rest the stone down inside there so it's supported. And that's all I need to do rather than try to fashion something that both attaches to the nail and is stable and doesn't have any weird fulcrum issues where balancing on the nail of the head would be a difficult thing to do. There, that's all that I would need for a small stone to nest inside there. So there's an aquamarine in the mount, or resting in the mount. Here's a rough draft of what this would look like, and now that my vision is coming into focus, I think my vision is stupid and dumb and wouldn't look good. The more I think about it, the more I think it might just be best to stick with the known typical, you know, gemstone in a little gem box, center it up nice. It'll sit in the center, nothing around it. And then I'll just put the rough pieces off to the side, perhaps on the lid, wherever the lid to that one went. Just have two things there, rough, finished. Probably go the other way because you read from left to right usually. Put them on a little pedestal to give them some height. Unfortunately, doing it this way, besides you know negating everything that I've done up to this point, also means that these little pill bottles will no longer be big enough to fit both of the gems, which means I need something else here, I think. 
Okay, forget wire. Forget plastic jars and lids. This display is going to be about less is more, or maybe less is less depending on how it looks. And it's going to be all about books. I have a few textbooks that are nice and flush edged. They're not hard covers, so they're white pages on the outside. And you know, Mineralogical Society of America reviews in mineralogy make for a great blank white canvases, more or less. And so what we're gonna do, gonna have two up front. This is an old, my phone case that the phone came in with a picture paper on top. For the middle row, that's gonna be four of these side by side. They, end to end, they are about three feet. And so I'll have enough room to do a couple of inches between them at a slight angle to make it kind of a curved back. And then those will each have a single stone on top. Ver very sparse, but with gemstones, I think less is more. So it'll be four of those across. And then the back is going to be two of these books. It's gonna be like that. And Analog Planetary Exploration will go on the back this way, put a couple sheets of computer paper over the top, and we're halfway there. We have a nice blank display case, or display platforms, and it'll have, let's see, I've got two faceted uh, sunstones there to go with that one, garnet over here, and then smoky quartz. So that's kind of what it'll look like, minus the bags, and I'll put some labels up print some labels up to put them next to the stones. And there's a gap in the middle in the back there. And I think that'll just be a big sign that says before and after faceting example, some kind of case title, basically. And we're done. This is what it's gonna look like more or less once it's in the display case. Obviously it won't have this plywood topping. There'll be, hopefully it's a white bottom so the books will kind of blend in more and disappear. And all you'll see is things like the barrel sticking out and the synthetic corundum. I don't know if I need to make a bigger sign. <laughs> it looks kind of small. Should probably prop it up at least a little bit. But if you want to see these in full sparkly detail with better lighting, you'll have to come to the show May 21st and 22nd and see my case and at least a couple dozen others, hopefully three dozen to four dozen, depending on how many people signed up and made cases. It should be a good time, so hope to see you there.